Right, update. Um, cut my hair. I... Wait, why do I look so light-skinned? Why is my camera trying to pretend that I don't look like Lupita? Hold on. Bitch. Is this better? I think this is better. Um, I don't have my glasses on and I'm blind, so I actually never know what my videos are gonna look like. Like, I can't see as far as the camera is, so I just never know what my videos will look like until I am editing. But anyway, let's just jump right into it. Um, cut my hair. I want to talk about natural hair. I want to talk about body image. I want to talk about femininity wild. So um, this has been <laughs> the first seven days of my entire life that I've left the house with my natural hair out. Um, I decided on a whim, I was like, you know what, like I'm going to dye my hair blonde. I called up all these hair salons and I was like, guys, like I have 4C hair, like I'm at like proper 4C hair, like from like South African 4C hair. And I need to, I need to go blonde. Like I'm ready to go blonde and I need to do it today. And they were like, okay, we're going to have to bleach. And I was like, you are not going to pour Clorox onto my scalp. Like it's not necessary. So on a whim, I watched some YouTube tutorials. I went and got box dye, I tried to go blonde, and instead I'm orange. So you know what, it is what it is, I look like a clown, but it's actually fine. No, I look like a lion, but it's actually fine, like I've learned to love it. And then I decided, you know what, like I actually, I'm gonna go bald. Like I'm gonna go bald, and then I went to a salon, and as they were cutting, I was like, no, I'm not ready to go bald, so let's just leave it here. <laughs> and now here we are. I'm a natural bitch now. And I just want to talk about it, you know what I mean? I feel like a lot of us women waste most of our lives on our appearance. If you're not wasting your life on your appearance, you are wasting your life on a boy who is wasting your time, on a clown who's wasting your time. He has dirty fingernails, he has halitosis, his mattress is on the floor, but you've wasted your entire time on him. And I just, you know what, like, I'm just in a space right now where I'm trying to be frugal about my time. Like, I don't, this preoccupation with beauty and boy, like, useless boys who don't even have a savings account, like, what do you mean? Do you know what I mean? And so, it's been a journey. I posted about it on my Instagram page. Um, I have a new Instagram page, so go follow that where we are not just serving looks, but we're just talking about real things. So I posted about it on my real Instagram page. And honestly, like, I think the first three days of walking out the house with my natural hair out, I thought I was gonna die. Like, I thought I was just gonna slip into a coma and die. Because I was like, oh my God, I've always had this thing about short hair. I feel like for a lot of black women, the relationship with our hair is more about texture than about length. So I've always loved the texture of black hair. Like I've always, like if you've been a follower of my channel, you know I've always been about froze, curls, kinks, like all of that, love it. But I've always had this thing that I would just look like Aunt Jemima with short hair. And so I was just like, you know what? I need to detach from my completely absurd, completely poisonous standards of beauty. On one hand, I forced myself to accept orange hair because I just feel like I've actually learned to love it like now I actually quite fuck with it um but I was just like you know what you need to learn to be okay being ugly like I'm just at a point where I want to learn to be fully sustainable to be grounded in myself without being attached to beauty without being attached to other people's validation just without being attached to success, like I just want to detach from all the things that I've imprisoned myself with. And one of those things has been beauty. So I did a thing where I went three weeks without wearing makeup. And honestly, that wasn't hard at all because I don't even really too much know anything about makeup. Like this is my go-to look, which is just BB cream and eyeliner. Like this is, you know, but in general, don't really wear makeup that often. But I feel like hair, has just been such a big, and I just think this is what it is for a lot of black women. We spend so much money, so much time, so much energy 
thinking about our hair, like obsessing about it. And not only that, I wasted like the first four days of being natural because clearly I don't even really know how to start. Like I, I don't know what to do with it. So I watched all these YouTube tutorials trying to figure out how to get stretch and how to get the perfect twist out. And like none of them worked. So here we are. Like just here we are, shrinkage, all of it. Like it's just a combed out fro. And this is what it is. You know what I mean? <laughs> No more than five minutes of my life is spent obsessing and investing in my appearance. Like for what? Think about all the things you could do if you weren't every day so invested in appearance. And I just think a lot of us associate femininity with long hair. And I just think that's such a white, colonial, Eurocentric way of thinking. Because our hair actually, it defies gravity. Like... I'm talking about four, type 4 hair, okay? Our hair grows upwards, it defies gravity, it absorbs the sun, like clearly we're, like, we're celestial, we're otherworldly. Who else has hair that defies the laws of physics? To define our femininity by standards that are impossible to reach is just poisonous, you know what I mean? And so I'm just trying to detach from that. And with all that, like, I'm not one of those people that's like, everyone needs to be natural, like, no one should relax their head, like, no, I'm not one of those people. Wear your wigs, wear your weaves, do all the things. Um, because ultimately, like, do whatever makes your life easier. I'm just at a point right now where I'm just trying to detach from constructs that are unnecessary. And I'm also just trying to free up my time, you know? <laughs> and like... <laughs> I know every black woman can relate to this. Like, if you're not spending hours doing a twist out, you're trying to figure out what your hair, what your next hairstyle is. And then you spend hundreds of dollars. If you live in the US, you go, you go get robbed by a hairdresser who claims that she's a celebrity stylist. And so she's gonna charge you $800 for some box braids that aren't even that cute. And so you've not only wasted your time, so you sat in a chair for five hours and then you paid $800 and then you're going to take it out in three weeks and then you're going to spend $2,000 on a human hair wig. And you, like, it's just so much time, money, energy spent on hair. And it's like, could we have ended the apocalypse if it wasn't everyday hair and everyday boys? And speaking of boys, another thing that I've been attached to is like validation from guys in relation to my hair. I just feel like hair has always been a thing that I can hide behind or it's always like a conversation starter. But then you just look like a clown when you show up to your dick appointment with your human hair lace front wig and it's coming off and you're frantically trying to keep it on. It, for, and all for what? All for what? I think in relation to boys, a lot of us, especially black women, feel that we need to have a certain hair type in order to be desirable. And I want to call out the natural hair community real quick because it's an absolute scam. The natural hair YouTube community, I refuse to participate because it's such a scam. Not only are people parading out here pretending to have 4C hair, and scamming us into thinking that we can achieve things that just aren't like what do you mean a wash and go on 4c what do you mean a wash and go like we're not doing that i don't foresee that happening um there are also people with uh wigs parading around as if that's their real hair there's also just very clear texturism um a week ago a hair company reached out to me I won't call them out, you know. Her company reached out to me to be part of their campaign. They were like, hey, they're like a typically white hair company and they're expanding into the black market. So they're like, hey, we're looking for some models and we'd love to work with you. Can you send us some pictures of your hair? So I was like, yeah, like, here we go. This is my natural hair. And then upon realizing my texture, they were just like, oh, actually we've decided to go in another direction. But thank you so much you know what i mean and then i actually went to a callback 
for another hair company that is a black hair company tell me why i show up to the callback and everyone in the room is white like what do you mean so this black hair company is now completely run by white people the photographer was white the director was white the casting directors were there was not a single black person in that room and yet they're selling black beauty so white people are out here selling packaging black beauty to black women and then we wonder like why the natural hair community is a scam of course it's a scam it's not even run by us it's all funding the pockets of white people <laughs> and so that that was when i realized wow like yeah actually all of this is a scam like if you're not a type 3 natural then you're not really part of the natural hair community like if we're just keeping it real like if we're not lying to ourselves the natural hair community is for type 3 haired women i said what i said Shout out to Julesy Nappy Fu, the realist. I've just been binge watching Nappy Fu's hair videos because, like, just trying to figure out what to do. Why do I look light skinned again? You know what? It is what it is. Um, I've been watching Nappy Fu's hair videos. She's incredible. If you're type four, go watch her hair videos. I've also been watching like South African YouTubers. Um, Y'all's channel is incredible if you have 4C hair. I actually met her in person and she's the sweetest, loveliest human being. Um, so there are a few, like there's a few type 4 natural haired human beings in the community, but you don't ever see them in the major campaigns. You don't see them making coin. You don't see them getting the representation and recognition that type 3 naturals are having because the natural hair community is very colonial, which goes back to like, if you're a type four natural and you don't have time to figure out how to, what to do with your hair and you don't, you don't care, you just rather wanna assimilate and wear your wig, I feel you, go forth, wear your wigs. You know what I mean? Like, who am I to judge? Um, and that's another thing that I feel like the natural hair community is rife with, it's just judgment. Like, why are we judging people for relaxing their hair? I just feel like it's really strange when we are forced to exist in a construct that doesn't benefit us and then when we find ways to survive and assimilate within those constructs we get shamed it's like when we shame people for relaxing their hair as if they haven't been bullied their entire life for having type 4 hair it doesn't make sense you know what i mean go relax your hair if that's what you need to do this was a rant. I didn't expect this to turn into a rant. <laughs> um, but all that to say, the natural hair community is a scam. Don't feel pressured to be a type 4 natural. Don't feel pressured to do things with your hair that you don't want to do. And don't feel pressured to impress boys with the hair texture. You know what? I had a friend who had started seeing this guy and at the time that they started seeing each other, she had a curly wig, you know what I mean? Like a type 3 wig. And so Obs, one day she takes her wig off, she goes out with this guy, and he's just completely taken aback. And he's just like, I don't know, I don't like you with that hair, like I prefer you with the other hair. And she went back to wearing wigs all the time just to impress this foolish boy who probably has dirty fingernail. Like, if you are seeing a guy and he does not want to associate with you because of your hair texture it's a no delete him block his number i feel like a lot of us curate our lives around boys and for what like there's no boy on this planet that's worth changing yourself for like it's not worth it he'll still leave you <laughs> he's still gonna cheat uh, speaking of boys, I've been watching Love Island. Jesus. The racial dynamics. The racial dynamics in Love Island have me screaming. I just think it's very telling that the first black girl on Love Island UK, by the way. The first black girl on Love Island was Yawande. Dark-skinned woman. Stunning. Like, objectively 
the prettiest girl in the villa like she's the prettiest girl there and tell me why she was always the last girl to get picked she was always you know and you could tell you could tell she was just in denial about her race but you just it was just so telling like what i love about love island despite i know that it's mind numbing and it's objectively trash but it really is such an accurate microcosm of the dating world like you see the racial dynamics play out you see how all all the other girls are white blonde straight haired and they don't even see her as competition because they know what it is and the sad thing is of course like she she was doomed to fail before she even got there you know what i mean because you, they just kaplunk one black girl one dark skinned black girl african features in a sea of white people and it's like what do we expect to happen fam like not even the one black guy who was there was interested in her not that he has to be but you know and all the black women on love island had straight hair and the only one who seemed to have been thriving a little bit was Jordan, Jordan. But she had a straight hair, Eurocentric features, like she wasn't really dark skinned. You know what I mean? And so you see how these dynamics play out. You see the, the, the lengths that black women have to go to just like Yawande was objectively stunning, like skin just stunning but you could see she was so insecure the entire time she settled for danny because he was the only one who gave her the time of day she changed her wig twice both both times straight wig both time it was just like assimilation.com like it was just wow just wow like the lengths that black women have to go to in the romantic world just to assimilate in a space that wasn't designed for them and what ends up happening happening you just end up settling and i'm just here to tell you that you actually don't have to do that one of the fears i had with cutting my hair and just like having it natural out like this was that my boyfriend would leave me <laughs> and he was the first person to see me so i told him to just come over like after i had dyed and cut it i just told him to come over and I was just expecting him to be like, oh, let me leave you for a white girl. Like, let me, you know? And I just realized how immature and crazy that was of me. But because he's not trash, he's actually great. He's just been supportive of all of my hair choices. He loves it. Like, he's just here for all of it. Um, he's like, if you want to go bald, like, I love it. Like, we're here. Like, let's go bald today. Like, you know, I just feel like those are the type of people you need in your life. Like, not people who are going to make you feel shit for the way that you look. I don't even remember what the point of this video was because I just went into a rant. But I've been talking for a really long time and I'm late. So I'm going to leave it at this. Um, the moral of the story is you're so much more than your hair. Whether you look like Aunt Jemima or you look like Rihanna, it's ultimately inconsequential because you're going to die. Do whatever you want. Don't hide behind arbitrary social constructs. Don't attach yourself to arbitrary social constructs. Your femininity is not defined by your hair length. Um, I realized how dramatic I was because honestly, nothing has changed. Like nothing. <laughs> Between having a wig and like not having a wig, having short hair versus having big hair, nothing's changed. Like my life is still pretty much the same. Like I'm still a bad bitch and I'm still gonna take you man. That was the moral of the story is that I've cut my hair, I'm a 4C bitch, but I'm still gonna take you man. Thank you for listening to my TED talk. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.